Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. So, I didn't have a video planned for today. And I originally was going to skip today because I had nothing and a lot was going on and it was just a hot mess. So I wasn't going to do anything, but then I couldn't sleep and I had a lot on my mind so I was like, I might as well film while I'm awake. So in true me passion, it's currently 12.45 in the morning. So I was like, I could do my first book review. And I'll do it on a book that I haven't really seen much about. Granted, I haven't really looked, but this book came out so long ago, I don't really know if anybody who's read it would bother putting a review on it in today's day and age, because this book came out in 2002, and it's not really talked about, so I figured... Why not put a review out of myself? Because I love this book so much. I found out about it in 8th grade, I believe, and ever since then I've been obsessed with it. And I recently got it for Christmas and read it in like two days because it is that good. The book is The House of the Scorpion by Nancy Farmer. I would consider this, I don't know, I would say middle age, but I don't know, it's kind of like the first half of a memoir. It's, I would say it's sci-fi, realistic sci-fi, if that's a thing because the stuff that happens in it, I believe can happen. But from what I know, it currently hasn't happened and it takes place in the future. Like, so realistic future sci-fi kind of thing, fantasy. That's where I would kind of categorize this book. Well, not really fantasy, it's a lot of science. So futuristic sci-fi, I guess. The way the book is set up, it's set up really interesting. I don't, I've never really seen a book set up this way, but it's set up in different age groups, like 0 to 6, 7 to 11, 12 to 14, and then 14, and then a whole other section, which I don't know Spanish, so I don't know what this means, but it takes place in a country called Opium. And opium is kind of like a buffer between America and Mexico. So it's basically this huge opium drug empire that kind of sits between the two countries. And it's about this character named Matt, who is a clone of the Lord, or the person who's like in charge of this entire country, and his name is El Patrol. And I, the story is really interesting and very unique because I've never really seen anything like this, and it's so good, and I would highly recommend it. Um, it's very easy to read. Like, I read it in, depending on how you classify your schools. I read it in junior high, but it's middle school for some people. So it's like very easy, very simple. And it was originally written as a standalone, but 11 years after this book came out, she wrote and released The Lord of Opium, which I have yet to read. It takes place a few hours after this book ends, so it, it would be really cool to have to like read them back to back, which I was gonna do, but then I didn't. It's really good. 
and I would call this a tagline of the book. It says, Matteo Alacron was not born, he was harvested. So the way clones work in this universe is they take the cells and incubate them to make sure they're growing and they're healthy and only a small percentage of them make it. So the percentage that do make it, they implant them into a cow, which is an Egypt cow, which an Egypt. Hey guys, it's editor me. How's it going? So I went on a huge spiel about what an Egypt is. And then as I was editing, I was like, no. So an easier way to think of an Egypt is kind of like a creature that has implants in its brain that prevent it from thinking for itself. And it can only listen and do orders from people who tell it what to do. And if it doesn't hear those orders, it could potentially be fatal depending on what's happening. So, yeah. Like, it's, it's really not a good thing to be in Egypt. So, it, Matt, it's not like a regular clone, because most clones are turned into Egypts when they are young, so they kind of like work their entire life until they die. Matt wasn't turned into an Egypt because he is the clone of El Patron, who runs Opium, the country. And when Matt discovers he's a clone, he doesn't really understand why everybody hates him because he's like, I'm human too, like I am what you are. But they completely disagree because, you know, if you're not like them, you're less than. And by them, I mean um, El Patron's power hungry family. And Anybody who's not a clone, they are taught that clones are stupid and are not real people because they are harvested from cows. So he finds out he's a clone and then he's like, but I'm the clone of this dude. So if you say something bad about me, you're basically saying something bad about him. And yeah, it, it's weird. So then there's this character, Maria, that is the daughter of a senator from America who hates Matt. Basically everybody in this book hates Matt except for El Patron and Maria, who he happens to slowly build a relationship throughout this story. Then he finds out why he was created in the first place. He discovers that the only reason El Patron cared about Matt in any way is because El Patron is past 100. Like, he's well over 100 years old. He, the only reason he wanted Matt was to harvest his organs to replace his failing ones and live longer. So Matt discovers this and he's like, holy shit, I don't want to die. I gotta get out of here. So he manages to escape, but then he runs into a lot of obstacles along the way to get to well, get out of opium, essentially. He has all of these obstacles that he's facing, and there's some small ones, and then there's, like, really big ones. And I don't know how much of this is a spoiler. We're gonna stick with it. Okay, I'm back. I forgot where I left off. So, I'm just gonna guess. So, I don't know how much of this is spoilers. But everybody in El Patron's family, aside from El Patron, essentially treats him like absolute garbage because he's a clone and harvested from a cow. And they don't like them. So everybody 
basically hates him. Matt slowly develops feelings for Maria, and her dad finds out about this, and he's not happy about it. He sends Maria off to a convent in America, and that's where Matt is headed. He's headed to find Maria and her mother, because that can change everything. And he f eventually makes it there. But there's a problem in opium. And Maria's mother tells him, like, you have to go back, there's something wrong, and we need somebody on the inside to kind of, like, tell us what's going on. So he finally agrees to go back to the place he just escaped from where everybody hated him and basically wanted him dead. So he goes back and he finds something very shocking that completely changes everything. And then the book ends. The plot twist at the end sets up the entire second book, I'm guessing. So I have yet to read that one. I'm really excited to because this one right here, this one is really good. So I would recommend, 100% recommend. It is one of the best books I have ever read. Mainly because it's so easy and something I'm really interested in. So yeah, if you like this video, give it a, a thumbs up, hit that bell notification, let me know if it works. Comment down below things you would like to see. If you've read this book, tell me your opinion on it. If you don't like it, that's fine. We can have a healthy book debate in the comments down below. Um, let me know if you would like to see more of these kind of videos because I think it could be fun. Um, also, subscribe. I don't know if I said that before, but subscribe because I would love to see you coming back. And let me know ways that I can make my videos better. I want to make videos better for you. So just let me know down below. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.